I know, I know, you want to talk about the batting. All the runs, all the sixes, all the madness. And I will try and explain it all, I promise. But allow me to talk about a part-time off-spinner first. Because Will Jacks was not even in the RCB team at the start of this IPL. In fact, it makes no sense at all why RCB picked him up anyway. Because he's basically a very similar player to Glenn Maxwell. And who would have thought that Glenn Maxwell would essentially pull himself out of the IPL midway through. And that Jacks would have a bigger role. Because they are both... Top four batters who bowl a little bit of offspin every now and again, right? Jax averages less than an over a game. He is no one's idea of a frontline bowler. Him bowling up front is the very definition of trying to steal an over. So here he was in this must-win match opening the bowling. And this is quite the wild ride as well because he was going up against the intent merchants, the orange southpaw crushers of sunrises. And yet... Look at what actually happens when he bowls this over. And it may be this over, or this over and this over, which is the reason that Sunrisers did not score 300 runs in this game. But that wasn't my first thought when watching the game. My first thought was, why is Reese Topley not bowling the first over? Because he's a swing bowler, and surely he would like to bowl with a brand new ball. This seemed like madness to me. The only bowler in their entire lineup that you can trust right now is Reese Topley, and he's a left-arm swing bowler who needs the new ball, and while off-spinners might also slow down the batters, Topley is swinging it away from them and is most likely to get them out. In fact, he is twice as likely to get out a lefty as he is someone who's right-handed. And there were two of them out there. But get this, despite being a swing bowler, Topley is actually better in the second over than the first when it comes to average which is not at all what I would have expected. In fact, with someone like Trent Bolt, it's completely the opposite. Trent Bolt needs to bowl that first over. But for Topley, you can see that he averages 29 in the first over and 15 in the second over. What's all that about? And RCB, like most teams, usually use him in the first over and the third over and then maybe the fifth over. But actually, you can see with Topley, you're much better off to use him in the second over and the fourth over. It's all so bizarre. So you could say that RCB did this perfectly. They got a cheap first over and then attacked with their best bowler in the period he is absolutely most suited to taking wickets against the type of batter that he loves to dismiss. And it still went for 20 runs, meaning that they didn't feel like they could bowl him again with the ball still moving around. So they went to Dial, who also bowled really well. But the problem with all these first four overs, even the three really good ones is they didn't take a wicket. And against the crazy Sunrisers batting, that's kind of what you have to do. And so from then on in, it was just absolute carnage. If you like seeing people clubbing things, you saw plenty of that. It was brutal hitting that seemed destined for a score of 300. But in only, only making it to 287, it almost felt like a failure. I mean, only 287? What are we even talking about here? If you need a VPN, go Nord. Use nordvpn.com forward slash Kimber to get a two-year contract with a discount, plus four extra months, plus gifts in some markets. It's completely risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. The link is in the show notes. Protect your computer like a blocker protects the stumps with Nord VPN today. If you think you are seeing more runs in each year of T20 cricket, you might be confused by this graphic that shows since the year 2011, when things started to get a little bit more normal in T20 cricket, that we have added 1.1 run from 2011 all the way through to 2014. So there really isn't a massive increase. It's not like the game is changing right in front of our eyes, even if 14% is pretty big. But you could see that there was a dip here as well because Kookaburra reinforced the seam and it meant there was a lot more early wickets. But players have clearly started to work that out again and there has been a rise. But in the IPL, while having a similar pattern, we could see that there's a little bit more of a kick right at the end. Now that might be the impact sub and also the two bouncer rule this year as well, but we have seen a lot more runs in the IPL. It has clearly been supercharged. The current runs per over for this season is 9.4, which is basically a run higher than all those other leagues we were looking at before. The PSL, the BPL, the CPL, there's a lot of L's, and the Blast. Now this might drop off a little bit as the wickets get older. That's very possible. 
But if you think you were seeing more runs, you are in fact seeing more runs. But of course, someone still has to score them in each game. So let's have a look at who actually made the runs for the Sunrisers here today. You can see that a big part of their runs came from these two openers. This is the true strike rate after the 10th ball in this season. And you can see here that Travis Head is doing pretty well, right? He is scoring five runs more than you would expect another player to be scoring after 10 balls. <laughs> the only thing is that it doesn't look that good because Abhishek Sharma is scoring 10 runs more than what an average player is after 10 balls. This is an absolutely extraordinary way to start your innings. I don't think I've seen any player with numbers anywhere near this since peak Luke Ronke. And even then, the difference between him at the top and second place is absolutely massive. And what this allows for is Head to just start at his own pace. He can get himself set. Clearly, over the course of the innings, he is the bigger threat. But having him with a guy who can do this means that Head can attack when he wants to and not from ball one. And if we look at their true values in the power play so far, we're also going to see just how miraculous they both are. So Abhishek has scored 107 runs in the power play and his true strike rate is plus 60 and his true average is plus 9. The fact that he is scoring 0.6 of a run quicker than a normal batter in the power play is miraculous, but also he's still averaging a lot. So it's not as if you're losing out. But if his numbers look good, <laughs> let's go up here to Travis Head, who at the moment is averaging 73 more runs than you would expect an opener to actually go in the power play. Again, it's early in the season. All these things are going to regress, but it's a hell of a start. But the other interesting thing is he's doing it at 0.3 of a run quicker than anyone else is for the same amount of balls. And you can see he's also quite comfortably in this sort of second tier of openers who are not quite as fast as Abhishek, but are still really, really quick. Like, Head's numbers do not make sense here at all. However, if we're looking at those two guys, should we come down here and look at Mayank Agarwal, who on this graphic looks like the worst player in the power play we have seen this season. Again, he didn't play that many games and he didn't make that many runs. But that's also because he's not playing games because he didn't make runs. And the truth is that they probably felt they had to make this change. And sometimes you make a change out of necessity. And from that just comes, well, absolute joy. And to go from this to this and this, that's quite the change. And it's worth having a look at Head and his consistency. And it's not just his consistency of runs, although his true average kind of tells you how good he's doing at that. It's also the fact that he's very consistent when it comes to his strike rate. 295, 151, 150, 140, and 246. He's basically always scoring quick, and he's almost always making runs. That means that he is a fast scoring, or, a, or a, this is ridiculous when I say this out loud, but he's playing like an anchor who is scoring like a slogger. I want to say fast scoring anchor, but I hate that phrase. And what this allows for is for the fact that Head can play with pretty much anyone. And so that is why Abhishek Sharma can go with him because Head is playing two roles. You might as well have someone else who dashes with him. And it's worth remembering this, that Mike Agarwal actually opened in the Mumbai game as well. And of course, that is a game that you've probably now forgotten because of what's just happened here. But there is another reason I want to mention the Mumbai game, because it actually shows you a little bit of a trend that we quite often see in fast-scoring limited overs games. You can see here the blue line is the Mumbai game, and they start really, really quick. Everything is quite similar to what happens with the Sunrisers. Of course, I think at a similar time, Travis Head goes out in both games, but that isn't the interesting bit here. It's how much they dip down. And you can see that they really got slow before kicking on at the end. I mean, slow is relative, but you know what I mean. Slow compared to what they were doing before. And there's a reason this happens. Essentially, when you're going so well in a limited overs game and you lose a wicket and you're massively ahead of the rate, players generally start to slow down a little bit because they start thinking, well, we're already so far ahead of the rate. We need to make sure that we have a really, really massive total and that we don't risk it all and try and touch the sun and end up actually flaming out a little bit at the end. The problem with this method is it stops teams from scoring 500 in ODI games and 300 in T20 games. And let's be honest, if we are going to have to sit through all this hitting, we deserve a 500 ODI game and a 300 T20 game in the IPL. And if you look at the red line of RCB here, you'll actually see that that slowdown just doesn't happen as much, right? And in fact, the only thing that slowed them down a little bit is around this area when Aiden Markram came in. 
he went into strike rotating mode and we just wanted him to hit a lot of sixes. And that's even more funny when you have a look at this because this is the true strike rate in five ball intervals of the Sunrisers batters. You can see that Markram usually starts really, really quick for the first five balls. It's after that he slows down a little bit and he becomes more of a par batter, but he loves starting quick. This is the normal sort of arc we see of a lot of anchor batters, right? All we really wanted is for him to start really quick again today. And a lot of this is more annoying because look at the guy behind him, Samad, who starts a little bit slower and then goes berserk. He had a hitter right behind him in the order. And for one last little wrinkle in all this, how about the fact that Aiden Markram actually has the World Cup record for fastest 50 over ton at one stage? I mean, he didn't hold it for all that long. But again, just hit sixes. You're really good at hitting sixes. This is the day to hit sixes. But I really want to focus on Heinrich Klassen now because he does hit a lot of sixes. So let's have a look at him for a moment, right? This is Heinrich Klassen in the IPL versus pace and spin. You can see down here against pace, he scored 285 runs. His true strike rate is plus 10. His true average is 3.1. These are all very, very good numbers. It's just that against spin, he scored 349 runs. And his true strike rate is plus 42. And his average is plus 81. So why am I showing you all this? Because you already know it, because we've already done a video on Heinrich Klassen. But the main reason I show it today is because when he came out to bat, there was only a single over of spin left to be bowled. And so they had to make a decision on who was going to bowl that. They made Lomroar bowl it rather than Jax. And I assume that's because they thought spinning the ball away would be slightly more helpful than spinning the ball back in. Lomroar's last over in the IPL, which was last season, went for 13 runs. And you can see from here, he is really no longer a bowler. He just doesn't bowl all that much at all. And so you had him going up against the best hitter of spin ever in a match where 275 was probably par. And what did he do? Well, he bowled the ball as far away as possible from Heinrich Klassen. At one stage, I thought he was just going to keep bowling wides. There's probably an alternate universe at the moment where that is what he is doing. He's just bowling wide after wide and that that innings will never finish but i point all this out for a couple of reasons one is that considering the amount of runs they scored today there wasn't actually that many wides bowled usually when people are hitting you for six pretty much every ball you just start hanging the ball wide and hope that they start hitting it straight up in the air and because of that you bowl more wides that didn't really happen today and so the bump they would have got from extras didn't quite come. But eventually, Longmore did actually start bowling balls that Heinrich Klassen could reach or wanted to play and that weren't going to be wides. In fact, after being hit for sixes, he actually bowled over the wicket, trying to bowl into the pads, kind of at the back heel. And that worked a little bit. And yet, he went for 18 runs in this over. It doesn't look like that's a victory. But if you factor in that this is a guy who doesn't bowl, who was on a pitch where they were going to score a lot of runs, and he was going up against the best hitter of his kind in the world, you would have to say that 18 is probably six or seven runs below par. This was a good over from a part-timer, and he's not even really a part-timer anymore. So with all these things happening together, you can see how it is possible very soon for a team to make 300 runs in the IPL. Attack the part-time spinner at the start. Get the bowlers to deliver more wides. Hope there are really good matchups for your best players later on and that none of your players try and act sensibly. And of course, the other thing that you need to make 300 is a very good batting pitch. And we certainly had another one of those. RCB lost by 25 runs. And we still had 549 runs scored in the match. Is it really too much to ask for one of these teams to make 300? And then are we being too greedy to hope that one day another team actually chases it? A lot of people complain that I'm not a former cricketer and so that I don't really know the game. Well, you know what they can't claim? Then I don't know desks. I've been using desks for years. I'm a collector of desks, old and new, and I'm sitting on a new one right now. I'm the Don Bradman of sitting at desks. So when I tell you that the E7 Pro next generation height adjustable desk from FlexiSpot is legit, this is like Michael Jordan talking to you about sneakers. This desk holds 160 kilograms. It is as stable as anything I've ever seen and it has under desk cable management. But really the main skill here is that this desk rises and falls at the push of a button and it moves super quick. And it has so many settings that remember your favorite heights. It really does it all. 
and I could not recommend the E7 Pro from FlexiSpot anymore. Even though I am currently sitting on one of FlexiSpot's BS12 Pro multifunctional adjustable upgraded fabric ergonomic chairs. My butt and computer have never been happier than when using one of FlexiSpot's products. So get over to their page right now for big savings.